Today we're going to be talking about DSLR cameras and mirrorless cameras and which one you should buy for shooting video. You got to just press record. Hey, my name is Nolan Molt with Think Media and I'm excited to jump into this DSLR versus mirrorless debate and which one you really need. Now on YouTube, there's a lot of videos out there already kind of diving into the differences as far as how they're built and the flange distance and all that kind of stuff. And sometimes it can be overwhelming. So in this video, I'm going to try and simplify it and make it as easy to understand as possible. And really at the center of it, just get down to what is better for video. But if you have any questions, you can leave those in the comments below and one of the Think Media members will get back to you. But let's jump right into the video. To start off the video, I want to give you a little bit of information about these two types of cameras. DSLRs are actually the older system of the two. The first DSLR came out in 1988, whereas the first mirrorless camera came out in 2004. Now today in 2020, there's still companies making DSLR cameras like this 90D and as well as mirrorless cameras. And Sony, I think, I don't think they actually make DSLR cameras anymore. I think they strictly are making mirrorless cameras. Whereas Canon has new DSLRs and new mirrorless cameras that have been coming out the past couple of years. Now the point here is that mirrorless cameras are the newer cameras. They have the newer technology and companies like Sony are really focusing on mirrorless cameras and actually Canon is too, but we'll get into that later. Before we dive into the differences between these two type of cameras, I want you to know that I have the 90D in front of me and the Sony a6500 in front of me. And I'm actually shooting on an a6600, but this video is not an a6500 versus a 90D. It is a DSLR versus mirrorless video. And so I am generalizing when I talk about DSLRs and I'm generalizing when I talk about the mirrorless side. And these are here for you just to visualize, kind of use them as props. And so you can remember the differences between the two. That being said, here's some similarities between the two. First of all, they both produce a really great image quality. You can get amazing professional cinematic footage out of this camera as well as this camera. And that is something that the DSLR and mirrorlesses have in common is that on either one, you can get phenomenal footage. Secondly, on both of these camera types, you can change lenses. So if you want a wide angle or a telephoto, you can get the correct lens that you need and both cameras allow you to do that. They both also have LCD screens and so not all of them flip out on DSLRs, not all of them flip up or out on mirrorless, but they do have the LCD screen on the back so you can see what you are shooting. And so when it comes to video, both of these LCDs on uh, both types of cameras are typically going to give you about the same quality when it comes to sharpness and color and brightness. Yes, some camera brands do have better LCD screens, but overall when it comes to mirrorless versus DSLR, there's not a huge difference when it comes to the LCD monitors on either of the camera types. Now this one really depends on the camera, but both do have autofocus during video and both have pretty good autofocus during video. So of course it matters on the camera that you're buying, but mirrorless cameras and DSLRs uh, have really great autofocus when it comes to video. When it comes to the shape of these two cameras, yes, there's some differences that we're going to dive into in a second but they have a very similar shape. They both have this grip on the right hand side and uh, they just look like a camera. And so, yes, this one is a bit bigger and this one is a bit smaller, but overall the shape of the two systems are pretty much the same. That being said, of course, there's some differences. And so let's just go ahead and get started with the differences between DSLR and mirrorless. So here on the DSLRs, they are a bit more robust. You can get a nice grip on this Canon 90D. And then on this Sony one, they typically have smaller form factors. It's a lot lighter, it's a lot smaller. I think the GH5 has more of a DSLR type body, but for most mirrorless, mirrorless cameras, they are smaller. Now, since these are a bit older, over the time they've actually made these more robust and uh, even have weatherproofing on a lot of the DSLRs. So if you were to drop this camera versus this camera, this one is going to hold up a lot more than a mirrorless. Now, Panasonic has some really robust, easy to grip cameras uh, over on the Panasonic line. So if that's something you're interested on the mirrorless side, check out Panasonic. But overall, DSLRs have the more robust camera system. When it comes to lenses, there are some differences. Canon actually just did announce that they're gonna be discontinuing 
being all new EF lenses, which means they're not gonna be producing or inventing these new lenses for this kind of a lineup. Now, that's okay though, because they still have a huge selection to choose from when it comes to these types of cameras. So you're definitely gonna be fine when it comes to choosing lenses, you're gonna have the options there. Canon really wants to focus on their mirrorless camera lenses, the RF mount, and produce more of those lenses. And so that's actually really exciting that they are gonna be focusing more on that. Mirrorless is the newer type of camera and so they have different mounts and so there are still new lenses coming out for mirrorless cameras. But one really cool thing about this is that you can hook up even more lenses with adapters and speed boosters. On this camera, I can get an adapter to attach any of my Canon glass to this camera. And so it really opens up more options if you wanna use native Sony lenses or use some Nikon lenses, you can get adapters for the mirrorless when you can't do that with this camera. Now the mirrorless also do have a shorter flange distance and all that means is that the lens is going to sit closer to the sensor. And that's going to allow these lenses for the mirrorless cameras to have a sharper image, less lens correction, and fewer glass elements inside of the lens. When it comes to the technology side, the mirrorless definitely wins versus the DSLR because I think it's just the newer camera and they're really focusing on the newer technology. So for example, this camera has in body image stabilization, where this one has an image stabilization that's electronic and digital, and that's not nearly as good as an in body image stabilization. We're also starting to see USB-C on mirrorless cameras for charging, which is pretty exciting. The past few years, I've been using DSLR cameras and mirrorless cameras, and my personal experience, I've noticed that mirrorless cameras actually perform better in low light. Now, of course, it's going to matter which camera you buy, but when you think about low light performance, most people think of the Sony a7S II. And when that came out, it was kind of like game changing with the low light performance. So we're starting to see a lot of great low light cameras come from the mirrorless section, whereas DSLRs have kind of always struggled with that low light performance. Again, there are some cameras out there that do have good low light, but I definitely think that mirrorless wins over the low light performance. When it comes to color color science and the colors that you can get out of these cameras, it really depends on the brand and it depends on your color grading skills. When it comes to Canon, I think they have really great color straight out of camera. I think Sony does have a good color out of camera, but it takes a little bit of tweaks and post. However, Fujifilm and Panasonic have really great color science too, and it really depends on your taste and it depends on the brand. So it's hard to say which one is better, so we'll leave it at a draw. One of my first cameras was a Canon T3i, and I had that camera for a long time, and I actually ended up buying this little camera right here, which is the Sony A5100. And I wanted to vlog on this, and so I started shooting my vlogs on this camera right here, and what I noticed was that the image was so much sharper than my T3i. They were both shooting in 1080 HD, but I thought the A5100 just looked so much better. So I started I started shooting some stuff on that camera and then I bought a Sony a6000 and I think the quality really jumped going from my T3i to the Sony a6000. Now the a5100 and the T3i were around the same price point at the time when I got it but the T3i of course is a much older camera. So now you're wondering which one should you buy and I want to give you two recommendations. So my wife makes YouTube videos and if she were to ask me, should I get a DSLR or a mirrorless camera? I would tell her it depends. For her, I recommend something like a Canon, whether it is a DSLR like the 90D or the M50, which is mirrorless, I recommend that because she's gonna get great colors out of the camera and so she doesn't have to do any sort of color grading. She can just edit her videos and upload them straight to YouTube. Whereas if someone else was asking me who was maybe more into video and wanted to do some paid projects or even just kinda of level up their video production over time, I would definitely recommend investing in a mirrorless camera. Now for all the reasons that I mentioned, I think that mirrorless cameras are the future. I think that it is smart to invest in that kind of a camera and you really can get a lot of bang for your buck when it comes to the options. Now, I was looking online at prices for uh, both sides of the coin, and I saw that a DSLR like the 70D is gonna cost 
$490. Now that's gonna have great autofocus, of course, great color, it's a bit of an older camera, but then I started looking into some mirrorless options and the GH3 from Panasonic is $380. Now that's a mirrorless camera and that is a pretty good price point for that kind of a camera. And then I was looking at the Sony a6000, which I got years ago, and that is $420. But then after looking just a little bit more, I saw that the M50 price dropped all the way down to $499 brand new. Now those are some pretty great cameras, especially for being under $500. And of course, these prices are gonna change over time. So you can check the links in the description. And I'm gonna put some links down there to some of the cameras that I would recommend to you. And you can check the prices in the description by clicking on those links. Keep in mind that I am speaking from my personal experiences, my personal research and personal tests. And so do your own research. Find out what camera is best for you. And really with content creation, there is no rules. There's no hard, strict guidelines. I'm just kind of giving you the advice that I would give a close friend or a family member if they were to ask me. So before we get any further, like this video and then comment down below what kind of camera do you have. And also, if you have anything to add to this conversation, this debate, leave it in the comments as well. I'd love to hear what you guys have to say. So here's my closing thoughts. I think mirrorless is the future, but DSLRs are not dead. This 90D is a phenomenal camera, takes amazing photos and videos, and I would definitely recommend this camera to my wife. Whereas something like an A6500 or A6600, I would recommend to someone who is more into video production and wanting to do maybe more than just an occasional vlog. Now to help narrow it down for you, if you're looking just for the best YouTube setup on the mirrorless side, which is something I definitely recommend, Sean and Omar did a really cool comparison between the M50 and the Sony A6400. If you wanna check that video out, you can click on the screen right now and I'll see you guys in the next video.